The following video is a demonstration of the added data motion migration module. This technology will allow you to migrate from any source to any target. As you can see here on the home page, there's no data currently stored. This is a fresh console install and this is how it would appear. At this point you have the option of creating a single migration or a multiple migration. So in this example we're going to do a single migration into the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud environment. So we're picking the migration, we're picking cloud, source environment is, uh, is specified here below. We're going to add the source IP and the source environment is a KVM based cloud and the target environment is a Citrix Zen based cloud. So we're able to transform the driver sets and stacks between the configurable uh, to, to do the AMIs in different environments. We have different options here so you can put the source username password you also have the ability to use private keys and you can throttle the bandwidth as you can see below so you know some uh, bandwidth uh, uh, constrained environments you can ensure the migration will not take uh, too much of the bandwidth as you can see the the, uh, the job has been uh, a set for configuration so once we go uh, capture that we go to the uh, job list and once the job uh, source uh, client is uh, downloaded to the uh, server. There are no agents. This is an agentless technology and script based so that uh, we are very non intrusive in the environment. So while the source is being uh, provisioned, we're going to go ahead and create a configuration profile for the Amazon VPC environment. So you can see here, we pick all the clouds we support, as you can see in that uh, drop down. We pick the cloud platform and we, de and we create a friendly name. So when you're picking the uh, target environment, you don't have to remember the credentials, you don't have to remember the name of the VPC you created. As long as you know what credentials you have, um, we will automatically um, allow you to view the available virtual private cloud environments or any EC2 environments that you have accessibility to in the Amazon cloud. But this is also applicable to all the other cloud and hypervisor platforms you can see at the top where we have different hypervisors, clouds, and HMC profiles available. So the client uh, usually takes about 30 minutes to deploy and, and, uh, and get the system prepped. Um, this is uh, regardless of the size of the system. Um, and then at this point, we're ready to start deploying the technology. So as you can see there, um, you can go to the log, and it will give you an up-to-date uh, status of where we are in the process, and ensure that we are 100% prepped and ready to uh, capture the environment and deploy directly to the target. Our migration flow is directly sourced to the target. It's very unique. There's no image library or any uh, staged environment or appliance. This is a software-based technology that goes direct source to target. So that is the source system. As we mentioned, we are going to auto-provision directly into the VPC. Um, as I mentioned, it's a software-based solution, so it's easy to install within minutes. Once that's configured and ready to go, you'll be uh, able to start migrating um, to any cloud, any hypervisor you choose. So we're going to th authenticate to the source server. So you can see during this entire process, the source is completely online, accessible, and in use. So the uh, customer or the end client doesn't even know the server is being moved into the next new environment for future state. This is that, that we're looking through the disk sizes there. As you can see, it's a pretty decent sized server. This is not a um, tiny workload. And uh, we're going to go ahead and um, go through all that. You can see everything populating in there. So that should, um, you know, so we're going to leave the source server for now and go back into the console. Uh, the configuration settings should be uh, ready prep and there she goes. So you can go ahead and configure the target server environment. And the target server environment will show you what the source environment currently looks like. And now, as you can see, we can pick the cloud. We can pick our uh, target cloud. Uh, we're going to auto-provision as opposed to using an existing target. And then you just log into the cloud so you don't have to remember that profile. Uh, or that password every single time with the private and with the key infrastructure. So you can see here, you can change the server name, you can choose the region, um, you can choose the instance type, 
Um, you can also um, choose, you know, which of EPCs you want to migrate into. So pick the instance type there, pick the VPC. You also can choose IAM roles if you choose to or create an IAM role. You also have the ability to create security groups or use an existing one. You also can create a VPC from the, uh, for our console. So all these things are optional, uh, as well as deploying to, to specific subnets as well. You can also use uh, private keys or create your own generating keys uh, for management. So extremely configurable, uh, talking to all the Amazon APIs, and extremely flexible. There we go. Make sure we selected the proper uh, subnet. And in using the existing key infrastructure. So now we're going to start the migration. This is as easy as that. So once again, you're in. Um, we're going to show you the uh, provisioning process as it happens um, in the uh, migration. So once again, the target data flow is source to target. So here's the uh, the VPC panel here, and you'll be able to see the uh, server auto provision. Check our running instances. There she goes. You can see the instance ID. So the target server is created, as you can see in the console, and the migration process is beginning. So due to the fact that we have a direct source to target flow, our data transfers are extremely efficient and fast. So we can provision and, and uh, migrate servers quickly. As you can see here, there's the server already running in the target environment. And once again, we revisit the logs. So you can see, you know, what the job summary currently is, where we are in the process. Those are the source. You can see the data is ready to be transferred to the target. Also go to the uh, target events. You can see, you know, what configurations happened and uh, where are we waiting on the data side. And at that point, it's just essentially watching the paint dry. The day the servers, as I mentioned, completely online. And during the process of the clone, we do run synchronization as well. So we ensure that once the server is completely seeded in an environment, it's a pretty up-to-date copy of what the uh, source environment looks like. And once again, revisiting the logs. Get an idea where we are in the process. As you can see the data transfer, we also do have the data transfer speed documented there for you. You can see it's significantly fast. Um, you can also see what percentage of data is it transferred at that point. So we can stay on top of the um, process. Uh, and you can do multiple migrations. This example, just use one. You can do bulk migrations and all the level of details available on each migration. You can also print the logs, export the log files, and you know if there's any troubleshooting needs to happen, you know they're very detailed and can lead you uh, to any possible uh, resolution. Once again, you know, just checking in on the server, see where we are in the process. As the uh, progress bar continues to uh, increase towards completion. So once it's complete, you uh, as I mentioned, synchronization happens in flight. We do file by file. We do not create any uh, extensive images. There's no library of images that for, for future deployment. So um, it's just faster to, to, to get your environment seeded. Uh, and uh, once again, we sync directly source to target. So once the data is completely in the servers migrated, synchronization is part of that process. This workload should complete uh, shortly. There you go, see the data transfer speed, how fast the migration is actually going. Looks like the job is uh, close to completion here.
and you can see here the, um, the job setter should change shortly to complete and then we'll verify the uh, target environment so we can see the uh, server is fully functional available on online Good thing is in the tracking models, it tells you exactly what file or folder, well actually which folder is being moved. So you can just keep track of, you know, how close we are to completion. So it's detailed in that regard. So my server migration is complete. Are close to completion here. Alright, that time we uh, see all the activity completed. And then we, we will um, log into the target server and you know, you know just perform some simple verification steps uh, just to ensure that the uh, server is available, accessible, and ready for cutover and production. There you go. So we just ran a quick test. Make sure the server was ready. And now we're just in remote desktop into the environment. So this is an actual clone. The passwords on the source environment will be the same passwords in the target environment. So this is the new migrated server in the future state. See all the drives are there and migrated. All the folders are present. And a complete clone of your source environment. So this uh, pretty much includes the demo video uh, regarding the uh, Atom Motion migration module. Um, I look forward to reviewing some of our other products uh, in the future, and thank you for taking the time to, to uh, consider added data.